welcome back everybody to the Ninja Academy in Perth, Australia for our third qualifier of the World Ninja League Premier Series, our first overseas. I'm one of your commentators today, Kane Casillas. Joining me is going to be Mary Layton, the commentator ninja, and we are going to be kicking off our mature kids, female and male divisions with quite the loaded field. Mary, why don't you uh, touch on the type of athletes we're going to be seeing today? Well, as you know, hello, Kane. Great to be here commentating on the Mature Kids Division with you. Everybody, my name is Mary. I'm the Commentator Ninja. And today we are going to have four athletes who have placed in the Ninja Challenge League, at least within the top ten. We also have a champion, Casey McLaren. For those of you who don't know, the Ninja Challenge League uh, com has males and females competing together, so some very high-level athletes out here today that we're very excited to see. We saw a little bit of a taste of what a Australia course is going to look like earlier in the kids' division. The first placement course is a speed course with a couple of things you could get hung up on, very smart design. And the challenge course, a little bit more of a grip gauntlet. So we'll be very excited to see how our athletes do. I mentioned placement course, I mentioned challenge course. What are those? Kane, why don't you explain that for our audience today? Absolutely. So our 13 mature kids athletes are going to be taking on the placement course first off. Placement course is your traditional flow course format, one and done. If you fall on an obstacle, your run will end. This is going to be a shorter, speedier course as our placement courses have tended to be throughout the Premier Series. And your placement on this course, as the name implies, determines the placement you are organized in for the challenge course. So if you're the slowest to the buzzer, you are going to be one of the earlier runs on the challenge course. If you have the fastest time, you are going to be running last on the challenge course. Now the challenge course is the big one that matters. No one's eliminated on the placement course, but of course running earlier could be a little more disadvantageous uh, as opposed to running later on the challenge course. The challenge course is where we get our top four who qualify for the finals. Over here, athletes are allowed two retries for the entire course. They're only allowed to use one retry on a single obstacle, which means there are two ways that your run can end without a buzzer. For one, if you fall on an obstacle twice. You don't want to fall on an obstacle twice because that will conclude your run. Or if you've used up both of your retries, a third fall will also end your run. So again, the three possible ways this could end for you, uh, falling on the same obstacle twice, falling on the falling on three separate obstacles, or of course the optimistic one that we hope everybody gets, get a buzzer. This is going to be a longer, pumpier, techier course emphasis on pumpier. Uh, this is, that is definitely something that the Ninja Academy courses are known for. And I think we'll see a lot of big, big, grip-heavy, grip-intensive obstacles. Well, stepping up to give us our first look at the placement course is our first athlete of the day. I believe this is Isabella Grosser. Looks like she likes fun and fitness. Isabella, going to have to move a little quicker in the beginning, as we saw for the kids division, the time limit on this five obstacle course is a minute, but you still are going to have to push the pace and she's going to have to work her way through the spider walk a little faster as she takes on these steps. Yes, we mentioned the importance of clearing with a fast time to be a little bit later in the challenge course. We've seen it play out where typically your athletes that place high in placement course tend to do very well in the challenge course as well um, but it's never a guarantee so really is just an advantage to have a little bit more time to watch the course play out but speaking of time Isabella has only 10 seconds left to get through two more obstacles we're getting down to the last three seconds here and that's gonna do it for her run great effort out of Isabella Needed a little bit of a quicker pace to hit that buzzer, but still showed us uh, some good techniques, different technique on these steps than we've seen from the other athletes earlier. Um, opting to go with a, a little split approach there. But good run for Isabella. Absolutely, and as you were saying, that uh, step technique, that's definitely something that our athletes can and most likely should jump. As you, can, as you folks can see on the uh, right side of your screen behind the leaderboard, 
There's a punching bag there. And our athletes have to go through the Lachey lane and then wrap themselves around the punching bag and then dismount on the backside. That turnaround is what ate up a lot of seconds for our athletes in the kids divisions. So not only are they going to have to be quick to that point, but they're going to be they're going to have to be quick off that punching bag if they want a shot at the buzzer. We did have one clear in the kids division and it was with less than a quarter of a second left on the clock. Yes, a challenging course now. These athletes are a little bit taller, so they may have less of a hard time getting wrapped around that punching bag at the end, but they're really going to need to plan for it. I think that's the, the issue we might have seen for some of our kids was just not really anticipating how tricky that dismount was going to be. So hopefully we have uh, some mature kids athletes who are watching, learning, and uh, are ready to tackle it. Still a great run out of Isabella. Thankfully, not taking any spills. Managed to make it all the way to the fourth obstacle without any falls. I'm going to be just waiting on Samantha Chapman. As you can see here, we've got quite the list of incredible athletes. We have seven athletes in the Mature Kids female division with another six in the Mature Kids male division. Only the top four from both divisions will be qualifying for the World Ninja League Premier Series Finals at Ferox Athletics in New York. Here Samantha. is Samantha Chapman. Samantha Chapman. This first obstacle here, nice little climb up the wall with a rope. I'm sure we'll see that rope disappear in uh, future divisions. But yeah. Samantha moving on to spider walk. Moving nice and quick. Very fast finish for her. We'll see what type of technique she's going. She's also going to go with the split technique. It might be possible that they spread these steps apart for our mature kids. Because we're not Those seeing steps... as much assertiveness over it as we did in the kids division. Yes, those steps also look pretty slick, so I'm, I'm wondering if the athletes are erring on the side of caution. All right, See, but we're going to have to throw caution to the wind here because we're getting down on time. Good grab. Could have reached out for the ring right there and probably should have, but it does. it is possible for her to get around that punching bag and get off, and it looks like it's not going to happen just yet but Samantha Chapman a great time to that point as we can see it took her 30 seconds to get to the fourth obstacle and she lost the rest of the 30 seconds on her time limit on that Lachey lane that's definitely going to be a challenging point on this placement course yes really have to be efficient through that what I liked about Samantha's run was you did see her using her reach to help herself get around that um, punching bag so great use of her her body awareness, her technique, but just not enough time. So moving on to our next runner, we have Savannah Smith. Let's see if we can get an athlete all the way through this course. Savannah so far so good coming into the spider walk, really making sure that her feet are placed properly, doesn't want to slip down, it has to pass that red line on the blue mat at the bottom of your screen there. Definitely has the height. There we go. And we're seeing a lot of interesting shoe choices here. Uh, typically in the U.S. you'll see a lot of Zantes. I've seen a few Asics shoes. I'm, I'm seeing a brand here on, on Savannah. I'm not sure what brand that is. But it looks like it has pretty decent grip. I might have to call her and ask her what she's wearing. There we go. Coming up now to the Lachey Lane where we've seen a lot of athletes take a lot of time. And it's generating that swing on this swinging blade flywheel type of move it has definitely been eating up time and savannah not able to generate enough swing there just hops on down now we're seeing a lot of our athletes not hold their swing long enough they're kind of trying to kick forward and back at the wrong time and it's uh, unfortunately taking away their efficiency on the course now, Isabel Small is coming up next. Isabel actually was fifth place in the Ninja Challenge League Youth Championship last year. As we said before, the male and female athletes compete together. So Isabel was just fifth in the country overall. 
and is currently 7th place in their Mature Kids Division standings. And Isabella tackling these steps with a little bit more of that assertiveness that we were seeing out of the kids division. And it looks like she's still struggling a little bit with building that swing. Like you mentioned, Kane, you really want to extend out those feet a little bit longer. But luckily for Isabella, she's got a great reach and very efficient movement oh. all the way to that punching bag. Missed that first grab. Needs a nice pullback to get to the dismount. Oh, I hope she goes soon. Trying to lower herself so she doesn't touch the red mat, and I think that's it. Unfortunately, yeah, that red mat just going to be off limits. But she had the right idea. We saw a lot of urgency through the spider walk and the steps. And it was just right here where she started to get a little spun around. Yeah, and with her, how efficient she was through the Lachey lane, I think we likely would have seen her get through donuts with the time she had left. Absolutely. That was the fastest to the Lachey lane so far. We're going to see if Ella Fougere is going to also join with a fast time on the leaderboard. Ella is our second to last uh, Mature Kids female to run. So this is for all the marbles of that good placement that we've been talking about in the challenge course. Great movement so far. Makes it in the second fastest time so far. But again, generating the swing here is going to take a lot of energy, a lot of time. And we see her legs kind of whipping back at the wrong point right now. I'm not exactly letting her follow through with her swing. Now she's got the right idea and reaches out for that next hold. Getting back into the swing of things in the uh, figurative and literal sense of the word. Oh, and it looks oh. like she's going for a skip here. Oh, okay. Wasn't going for a skip. Oh, and just ran out of time. Great work out of Ella. You know, Kane, I, I think what you're seeing on that trapeze swing, we mentioned this is the first couple of years where there actually is a, um, a kids division uh, in the Ninja Challenge League. So a lot of these athletes are newer to the sport of Ninja may not have all those techniques totally down pat, but still putting in some really good efforts. I think Ella had the right idea. It looked like she was thinking about maybe going for a skip beyond that uh, that punching bag to get the clear. Absolutely. And it's even then, even in just a couple of years, okay. or less than a couple of years of training for some of these athletes, it's incredible to see how much they've progressed. And we're going to see how our final Mature Kids female athlete, Harlow Smith, does on the course not wasting any time up the rope ramp. One of our smaller athletes, probably gonna take a couple seconds to get situated. Not at all, she's just gonna shimmy right through the spider walk. Very wow. quick so far. A little more hesitant on these steps. Definitely wants to get herself through them quickly, but also without falling down. Again, they look pretty slick. Now she's got about the same amount of time here as our last couple of athletes have had. So hopefully she can figure out this build. Doing a little bit better with keeping those feet up. She's going to have to reach now, and she does. Not a whole lot of time left on the clock, but still enough time to definitely get through the punching bag if she secures it properly, but she doesn't. And it all looks like she wanted to make contact on the first swing. It just times up as well. Still a great effort out of Harlow. Yes, I liked how aggressively she lacheted into it, trying to give herself a little bit more momentum for that dismount. Those uh, those slanted steps, you mentioned there'd be some some tricky lower body in these courses today, and, and those steps, they those are pretty deceiving. You wouldn't think that they'd hold the athletes up quite so much, but definitely eating up a lot of time for them on the course today. Definitely. And as we can see on the leaderboard here, Harlow's run puts her into third place. Just about a half second faster, 0.6 seconds faster than Samantha Chapman. Isabel Small made it to the Lachey lane faster than any of the athletes. So we'll be seeing her run the challenge course last out of the female competitors, while Isabella Grosser will be kicking us off on the challenge course. Now, 
Can't help but notice that uh, Isabella was also the first runner of the placement course. We will be seeing her be the first runner on the challenge course as well. How do you think that plays into the uh, odds of getting in the finals there, Mary? Well, I think what I'm seeing is, you know, these times are getting progressively faster and progressively further into the course. I think that we'll see Isabella put in a really great effort. Um, and I'll continue my analysis. I don't want to take away from Mr. Ben Reed's run here. We'll get back to that. Benjamin Reed actually placed sixth place in the Ninja Challenge League Championships last season. Just one spot behind Isabel Small. Started Ninja when he was six years old. He's currently 11. So we might see a bit more experience show on the course here today. Yes, from the Fighting Lions Gym. That is a gym out in Australia. Lots of athletes uh, from that gym. We've seen a few come to the World Championship as well. There we go. Generating a good amount of swing on the Lachey lane right now. Might be able to go for the reach. Perfect. Great movement so far from Benjamin Reed. A lot of time left as well. He's just going to lock in on that punching bag. Got to be careful of his feet touching there. Oh, oh and his foot tapped. Oh, Might be looks ruled like... as incidental. Yeah, looks Nothing. like we're letting him go. Just getting through the donuts. Just like that. Going to have to save himself a little bit of time. Going to be close call to the buzzer, but he gets it with 0.26 seconds left. Now, again, we saw a lot of good speed out of Ben so far. Same time, there was that little slip up. I'm wondering if that might be overturned or if that's going to be marked as just incidental contact. Regardless. And it's in he had about 27 seconds midway through the Lachey lane. It just goes to show you how much time that uh, punching bag can really take up for our athletes here. Absolutely. We'll see if our next competitor will be even faster to that point or even quicker through the punching bag. It's going to be Mason Flanagan Hawk. Now, something I did want to point out as well, Mary. Uh, the Ninja Challenge League doesn't exactly have the same rule set in terms of how to approach an obstacle as the World Ninja League does. World Ninja League tells you what's inbounds and out of bounds and not exactly how to do the obstacle. Uh, Ninja Challenge League will be a bit stricter on that, so we're not we might not see as many different uh, beta breaks as we might see in our other qualifiers. That's a really interesting um, element for these athletes competing in the Premier Series. Um, especially when they, they come to the U.S. I think it'll be cool to see what sort of influence that has on Australia after some of the athletes come over for the finals. And here we see Mason taking full advantage of his wingspan there. Still 20 seconds on the clock. Definitely has the time to get through the donuts. He's just going to have to not slip up. Oh, gonna... he's kind of dead in the water here, building it up. All right, there he is. Getting past this will at least put him in the top two, and he does have the time to do so. He gets through. And touched the mat again, but it's going to be marked as a clear, possibly because his entire body did cross the plane past the punching bag. We can get a look back at the Lachey lane. Now we have our next one. Not too many male athletes left. We've only seen one clear of this course so far. Hopefully, Zavin Ribeiro can be our our next clear. Zavin just waiting waiting for a go ahead from the refs, and he is off, not wasting any time. I can tell that this kid's gonna go for speed. He wants it. Great Quick hop. moves through the spider walk. Yeah. Yeah, and just stepping right over those. Haven't seen anybody really try to stride anything, but at the same time, it's nice to play it safe. Making it to the Lachey lanes, the bare minimum that we should be seeing right now. If you want a good spot on the challenge course run order. Ooh, just a little miss grab. Makes a swift recovery and drops down. Unfortunate. It looks looks like the build on that flywheel is proving to be pretty challenging for these mature kids. Might just be the distance that they have to go to reach to the next uh, hold there. 
Absolutely, and you can see here, Benjamin's still sitting pretty in first place with a very close call to the buzzer, but still a great run nonetheless. We're going to see if our next runner, Adam Francis, can join Benjamin in the finisher circle here. And off Adam goes. Definitely using his leg power and his height to his advantage. We can see he's one of our taller athletes, covering more ground on the spider walk. Great jump onto the and steps. Adam, it, Adam about to tackle the Lachey lane. Hopefully he can build things up a little bit quicker than some of the past competitors. Nice use of his reach there. Can he figure out the punching bag? Looks like he's not going to static it. Oh, there we go. A nice little static. Good pull back. Now, this is the scary part. Going from... Oh! Oh, yep, that, that's the scary part. Going from having two hands on the hold behind you to then using your core to pull yourself all the way in. It was a great effort. It looked like he was giving himself momentum to get off on the dismount, but... Just a little bit tricky. Great course design. Our next Jordy Sinclair stepping on up. Jordy just waiting for some course resets here. And he's moving. Again, we're seeing a lot of people be very quick up that first obstacle. Jordy actually took a little bit of a, a shortcut there, not going all the way up and over the wall. What a dismount. Took a little seat there for a second. Just wanted to take a breather, you know. Yeah, yeah that half second arrest on the speed course is, is an eternity on any other course. <laughs> Gonna have to just generate a little more swing. 30 seconds to this point left on the clock. Definitely doable. He's just gonna have to master this punching bag on his first try, a little crooked. Oh, and he's got that two-handed approach, which can be a little intense. I like what he did there. Oh, great dismount. Best we've seen him today. Absolutely. And now it's just going to come down to the donuts. Definitely a beatable obstacle, but with time ticking down, maybe those pulls back are going to eat away at the clock. He's got a couple more to go. And he gets there. How... 59.11 seconds. We have seen two clears on the placement course, both with less than a second on the clock. Jordy, however, taking the fastest time by six tenths of a second. It's really great to see how dialed in this course is with its time limit. I think that that just shows a lot of, of smartness on the course designer's part to have a course just so locked in with giving you exactly the right amount of time. Speaking of exactly the right amount of time, exactly one minute for Nico Zandona here. Nico's got quite a resume. He was second place in the NCL League in 2022, just behind uh, Casey McLaren, an athlete we mentioned earlier. And look at the efficiency. Really huge launch into the Lachey lane. Definitely the fastest we've seen to this point. Nico also training out of Fighting Lions. Got to be proud of that Fighting Lions team getting two athletes in the top 10 showing up for the Premier Series right now. We saw his teammate Benjamin get a buzzer, and it looks like Nico is going to slash that time and take the number one spot by 15 whole seconds, 45 seconds flat. That was a great run out of Nico. I really love how efficient he was through the Lachey lane. These are moves that he's are throwing are, are, are ones that you would see out of some of the mature kids in the U.S. as well. So we're, we're closing in on that experience, closing in on, on that competitiveness, which is really, really phenomenal to see. Absolutely. And if we can get one more look at the leaderboard, we have our three finishers, Nico, Jordy, and Benjamin. They will be your last three runners on the challenge course with Nico as your anchor run. Adam Francis will be kicking off the uh, challenge courses for the Mature Kids Male Division. But let's take a look at Nico's run again. Not, not only was it a clear, but it was the most efficient run we've seen so far today. 
and it yeah, really Nico, started with that speed there on the spider walk. Yeah, Nico also had a lot of great moves through the Loche lane. Thinking about the challenge course, you're going to need a lot of upper body efficiency because it is so grip intensive. I want to go back to uh, Isabella's run, our first place finisher on the female side, Isabella Small. Now, she also had some really good efficiency through those upper body obstacles. Um, she was a little hesitant through the spider wall, but once she got to these upper body obstacles, really just had the, the most of run through that. I think that's going to be really, really advantageous for her going into this more grip gauntlet style challenge course that we have. Absolutely. And as we can see here, the leaderboard for the, for the female division of Mature Kids not very spread apart. It's going to be close. It could be anybody's game. So that efficiency is absolutely going to be the difference between something like first and second, and possibly even fourth or fifth, as we do, as we will end up saying goodbye to two of our athletes today. All right. Yeah. Well, we are going to get ready to go to our challenge course here. So we have a quick word for you from Enzo Di Ferrari Wilson regarding a very cool organization that he is a part of. Uh, why don't we take a look? You're never too young to follow your dreams and make a change. Let's all see films regarding the ocean's health. Ocean Needs Everyone is celebrating five years of saving the oceans. My name's Enzo and through Ocean Needs Everyone, I help save the ocean by doing beach cleanups, seal and mangrove plantings, making art about recycled plastic, and making films regarding the ocean's health. How can you help save the oceans at home? Well, even if you don't live near an ocean, trash can end up in there eventually, so cut down on your use of single-use plastics. If you see trash on the roads or beaches, make sure to pick it up. Use less gas-powered vehicles, fish responsibly, and help support local organizations. I started my organization when I was 12 years old because I wanted to make a difference. So remember, you're never too young to follow your dreams and make a change. Let's all save our oceans together, one piece of trash at a time. Welcome back, everybody, to the Ninja Academy in Perth, Western Australia, home of the third qualifier for the World Ninja League Premier Series. Kane Casillas here alongside Mary Layton, and we are jumping right into our challenge course for the Mature Kids 
divisions. Uh, Mary, I'm terrible at explaining the challenge course. Why don't you break it down for us here? Kane, I think you're actually great at explaining the challenge course, but I'll go ahead and give it a shot. Hey, everybody, it's Mary, the commentator ninja. And our challenge course today, this is a course that is exactly what it says it is. It is a challenge. So dissimilar to the placement course, you're going to see a bit longer of a time limit, longer obstacles, a little bit more technical, really a course that could pump you out. Now, an interesting element to the challenge course that differs from the flow format in the placement course is that you're allowed two retries in your entire course. So max you can use is one per obstacle. If you fail an obstacle two times, then your run is over. But you do have those retries in your back pocket in case you don't approach an obstacle right the first time. We actually saw in our kids division that this was beneficial for our athlete. The first obstacle of the challenge course is a rolling log. Um, our first athlete took a little bit of a slower approach at first, but then Lila was able to uh, figure it out and take a faster approach on her second try, clearing that, and she actually was able to get through uh, the first three obstacles that she needed to to qualify for finals. So that retry is definitely a, an important thing to have in your back pocket. And the challenge course does determine our top four for each division and whether or not they are going to finals at Ferox Athletics in November. A lot on the line today. Absolutely. And we have quite an evenly stacked field here. We have a lot of athletes who were in the top 10 in the Ninja Challenge League finals last October. We'll be having their season's championship coming up this coming October as well, just a couple months from now. So it'll be nice for them to have a good season of elite competition, the Ninja Challenge League Championship, followed by the Premier Series Finals. Definitely two competitions you're not going to want to miss. All as right, we can see here, the run order for the Mature Kids Female Division, Isabella Grosser will be kicking us off with our fastest to the Lachey Lane, Isabel Small, rounding out the female runs. Now, the time really was what got in the way for our female athletes in the placement course. There wasn't anything that was overly technical for them. They were definitely able to complete all of the obstacles. So I think we're going to see a really strong showing from them on the challenge course, which is a little bit more upper body intensive and they'll definitely have a little bit more time to complete it. So I'm excited to see our females get through here. We saw in the mature or in the kids division, you know, one of our male athletes that didn't get quite as far through the course made it very far in the challenge course. So we're hoping to see that for our athletes in mature kids. Speaking of which, here's Isabella Grosser, our first runner to kick us off and show us this challenge course. Isabella ran first in the placement course was a little cautious, and we're seeing that caution again as the three-second time limit ticks down. I personally do think that it's a little smarter to speed through these first three obstacles right before stepping into cliffs and books, but Isabella still making quick work of this, having to step back a little bit, but she regains her composure and moves on to our first grip-intensive obstacle. Now the cliffhangers are a very iconic ninja obstacle. You'll see that that first cliff is a, quite a bit bigger than these three in the middle. But Isabella is cruising, making some small, thoughtful movements. Now here's a tough transition to the books. And oh, we don't like it when they're looking down. Ah, but this is where she's going to be able to use her retry. She's going to restart this obstacle. Absolutely. We saw a bit of a low grab on the first book, and that definitely rattled her confidence a bit. You could see as she started to second-guess her hand placement there. We saw her timer freeze and now resume as she is allowed to start again. I like that she's leaning right into the second ledge, grabbing the end of the first, so she's mm -hmm. minimizing her moves there. Yeah, much better the second time around. Looks like she's a little bit more warmed up. And here's the transition. Oh, and just didn't quite have the grip strength to reach that single book. I maybe would have liked to see her try to reach out and, and grab the second one. It's a little bit easier to hang on to books if you have a wider, a wider grab. But great effort out of Isabella. Great to see her recover on those cliffs and be more efficient her second time through. And now we'll be moving on to Savannah, our second runner in the challenge course. Savannah Smith, we had all of our competitors 
advance to the fourth obstacle in the placement course. Savannah made it in the fifth fastest time. Let's see if she can pick up the speed here. She's definitely making light work of the first few obstacles, which I think is a great tactic to have. Get through those first few obstacles as fast as you can, especially if the top four could potentially be a race to that point. What is... Uh, she's stepping down just to get a better grip. Totally fine. There is a platform in play there. And I think what's interesting about the placement course going into this course is that we don't really know how these female athletes are going to do on the upper body obstacles. We didn't really get to see a lot of upper body in the placement course. Oh, Savannah is down again. Narrow grip on that first book. Just going to use her first retry. And it looks like that transition between the cliffs and the books, definitely something that can be pretty tricky. You see, you're trying to get comfortable on that cliffhanger there. But once she refamiliarizes herself with it, she is in full swing, but drops down. And that is going to end Savannah's run. She got there with a time of 19.5 seconds. That puts her four seconds ahead of Isabella and in first place for the time being. Now, if one person gets to that point slower than her and fails as well, Savannah will be going to finals. No one is safe right now with four runners left. All right, and here's Samantha Chapman getting started off, looking a little bit, taking a slower approach on the rolling log. It's a pretty big PVC, so for our smaller athletes, if they're not feeling confident with the run, that's a good approach. But again, we do want to see our athletes get through these first couple obstacles quickly especially as getting to those cliffs with a fast time can secure your spot in the finals. And we're seeing Samantha get a little spun around on that rope there. That distance might, it does force the athletes to throw themselves forward once they land their feet on that platform. And that's something that we haven't seen our athletes necessarily commit to yet. Great technique out of Samantha on the cliffs, really using that leg to pop out. And, oh, there's that grab I wanted. Going to the second book, although still a narrow grip. Great grip strength out of Samantha. Now a minute has passed on the clock. Time limit is three minutes, and as we're just hitting two minutes remaining, Samantha is flying through the rolling wheel. Has not stopped. Kept a good rhythm to this point. And quickly dismounts. Coming on to the uh, mini cliffs and cannonballs. And we saw some of our kids athletes skip that center cliffhanger, but no problem for Savannah. Easily able to make her way to the dismount. Now coming up to the fish hooks. Going to have to use a little bit of a jump there. She does so. Unafraid of any falls here. Does not properly land the first move. And the yeah, second. She really is really kind of flopping the the hook or the handle onto the hook there. Not being very uh, strategic with it. She does have enough time to get through this obstacle. But she's really going to need to sturdy up that wrist. Didn't Come on. Enough. And you know, at this point, might be smart to take a drop, save the energy, and regain your composure, which looks like that's what she's going to be doing. Using the first of her two retries, this is the second to last obstacle. So hopefully won't need another retry after this. I do believe that it's going to be make or break on this run for Samantha. And I like this approach. Still having a little trouble getting that on first try. So it's a precise move. You know, this, these are nicer hooks here. All right, so we've got that. You can see that she's not necessarily trying to smack the hook like last time, really trying to raise it and then line it up on her swing back. Yeah, and it, here's where she got it hung up last time. We've only got 10 seconds left. I hope she can get it here. But what a, what a testament to this young lady's grip strength. She is still hanging on with that one hand. Absolutely. Wow. A great fight out of Samantha Chapman. By far in first place right now. Also going to lock herself into the finals with that run. 
We saw a narrow grip on the books, but it was definitely working for her. She trusted her grip enough to get a quick dismount there. As we now head on to Harlow Smith, who was the third fastest on the placement course. And I think the the athletes who got to the Lachey lane faster were very confident in their footwork. So I do think that we are going to start seeing some of the athletes really get through these first three, probably in under 15, if not 10 seconds at some point, um, and really just giving themselves a spot in finals. But, you know, we don't just want people to get to finals. We, we want to see clears. So hopefully that's what Harlow can do for us here today. Absolutely. We saw Samantha push the absolute limit for a buzzer. And with three athletes remaining, I am confident we'll see it. Harlow taking a slower approach, trying to not make the log spin. And it works for her as she sprints through the BOSU balls and lands the rope swing on her first go. Good jump oh. as she almost tipped off, but she makes it anyways. Yeah, I got a little bit squirrely there on her dismount, but we're moving on to the cliffs. I don't see as much good cliff technique right now as I'd like to see. I'd like to see a little bit more pop of the knees. There she is, settling in. All right, time for this reach to the books. Not quite able to match on the books. That left hand came down just a little bit too low. So hopefully she can adjust her approach here. Yeah, it was a pretty low grab on the book. And as you're saying, she's really forcing her hands along those cliffs. Not the most efficient and does oh, not no. get a high enough grab to really hold on to that book. But goes back oh. to celebrate with presumably her family. Very quick strides on those BOSU balls. That fast time does put Harlow in third place right now. Puts her not in a guaranteed spot for finals, but in a good spot for finals as our second place runner, Ella Fougere, is... Oh, slipping right off the spinning log. Uh, this could be troublesome for Ella. She's going to have to move a little faster. I think the longer you stay on that spinning log, the more likely it is to spin. Yep, Ella being very careful right here. Now, the issue with her foot placement is that if that log does start to spin, her feet are totally forward. Not a lot of wiggle room, but she makes it through. Great body awareness, great balance. Loving the emphasis on balance I'm seeing here. And she's popping right through the rope swing. Not going to be a fast enough time to put her in the top four. She's going to have to beat this obstacle. If she wants to lock her spot in the finals. I feel like I'm watching a chess match right now. Ella, very methodical on the cliffs. She's eyeing every part of the ledge, tracking her hand placement, reaching carefully out to that first book, which she holds on to. I oh, just need a little side-to-side -side swing to get going on the rest of these books here. Oh, and it looks like she makes oh, the dismount. smart move. And we will be seeing Ella Fougere in the Premier Series Finals with that run. But of course, we have not gotten a buzzer yet in this division. Ella could be our first. Yeah, Ella's really going to have to keep it moving. She's taking a slower approach here to the rolling wheel. Um, still have two upper body obstacles left to go. Now, the cliffs and cannonballs shouldn't take too long. But if you get hung up on those fish hooks, man, I don't know if it's going to be in the cards for Ella today, but I'm hoping she has something fancy up her sleeve for me to see here. Very smooth dismount. About a minute five left on the clock. Cannot stop and rest, but she it looks like she's trying to find the comfortable uh, position to really grab onto that cannonball. We can yeah, we mentioned rounded cliff ledges as well. Not easy to grip. Yeah, we mentioned also these are these are sizable cannonballs. These are not your your casual cannonball size here. So it's definitely a little bit more of a challenge to get your hand all the way up and around. But oh no, but. I she does get to use her second retry, has 36 seconds left. It is still possible for her to hit the buzzer. She's just going to have to be flawless through these last three obstacles. And here we go. Timer has resumed. 
Ella back on the cannonball. Much smoother this time around. Yeah, making those reaches nice and easy. Big pull back here. Hopefully she goes for this dismount. Not she feeling need to pop those cool knees. Grip and down she goes in the same spot. Unfortunate. But that is going to put Ella in second place for the time being. And send her on to the finals. We saw that fight um, on the books, that early dismount. That is the move that put her in the top two. And while she did take a slower approach, we will be seeing Ella in the future. All right. And now our final hope to get a clear on the female side. Oh, and not off to a good start, Isabel. Looks like she was kind of taking a medium approach to the rolling log. She's going to take a slower oh, no. approach. Down she goes. Has oh, been top no. 10 in the last season of the Ninja Challenge League and top 10 in standings in the current season. An absolute shock to see her down on the first obstacle. Wow. And not the leaderboard that we were expecting for the challenge course. But you see Samantha Chapman. She had that phenomenal fight on the fish hooks. She was hanging on those things for at, at least a minute and a half, actually, because she had a minute and a half by the time she got there. So great display of grip strength out of Samantha. Ella, Savannah, and Harlow are going to round out our top four for the female mature kids. And we will see them at Ferox Athletics in November. Absolutely. Great runs out of all of our ladies here. A lot of heart and a lot of big fight, especially out of Ella, who I want to point out, was not the smoothest through the cliffs and the books, but managed to hang on anyway and really push through to clinch that spot in the top four. And that is what a great compliment for our yeah, what a female athletes in the Mature Kids division. We've got six male athletes coming up, and it looks like we're going to kick it right off. With Benjamin none. Reed, first in the placement course, ran first in the placement course, running first in the challenge course. A bit uh, surprising there. Oh, it wasn't pretty, but it was great. He made it. The duck walk working well for him. Good technique on the rolling log. Benjamin training out of Fighting Lions under coach Paul Lyons. Says he loves Ninja because it's fun and challenging and that there's always a new obstacle to try to defeat. He loves his laches and running up the wall. Not too many of those obstacles. And uh, unfortunately, that book's going to force his first retry, but... His favorite obstacle is the salmon ladder. Says he's trying to master that right now. The book's proving to be a challenging transition from the cliffs for our athletes today. Now, I liked Benjamin's approach. He did reach out a little bit wider. And oh, oh. He's, he's going to go for that dismount. Wow. Great work out of Ben. He knew he had to get off of there, and he held on just long enough to build up enough momentum to hit the dismount. Excellent work. Ooh, interesting approach there. He worked his way up and then forced the wheel forward before making any more moves. Kind Looks of like we're doing a him. nice... Is that tape on his hand as well? Might have a little rip there that he's maybe being a little wary of. Definitely some grip tape there. Hopefully won't hurt him too much here. I think that's a smart idea to use the hand with tape on the cliffhangers as opposed to being the first hand to go to a cannonball. Sometimes that tape can make it difficult to grip on, but Benjamin is, is having a great run so far. Yeah, Benjamin showing us the skills that got him top six in the Ninja Challenge League Championships last year. Gonna hit the fish hook around a little bit, but rehooking. And on top of being a ninja on the course, he's a he's a ninja in real life. Black belt in Taekwondo here, Mary. Likes, wow. to, uh, likes to show off all of his athletic prowess to his family there. Parents got to be proud of the run he's putting up right now. Yeah, he's showing a great persistence here, really going for that precise move. This is, this is where we see that technique, right? We mentioned earlier we don't really see a lot of moving with obstacles 
from the Australia side, except for this one right here, and you're seeing it, it really is proving difficult for our mature kids athletes. You need just enough pop. Oh, great last move. And with that, Benjamin Reed's gonna come up the rope ramp in the wall top to hit the buzzer and become our first oh. mature kid to beat the challenge course. Setting the bar very high with a time of two minutes, 35 seconds. And you could tell that he was excited. Here we have a little comparison to Samantha. When she was on the hooks, she had a lot of trouble getting everything right there. But Benjamin able to overcome that challenge and uh, get our first buzzer on the challenge course. Do you think it'll be buzzers all around, Kane? I think we're going to get quite a few more. Yes, and Adam Francis, our next runner, definitely someone who could join Benjamin in the buzzer club. Very, very quick on these first few obstacles. We like the efficiency. Great transition from the rope to the platform. A lot of the athletes really hanging on to that rope, but Adam knowing he's got to just let it go. Whoa! And get to his dismount. Whoa! Almost slid a little bit on the cliffhanger there. And you know what? Adam took a page out of Benjamin's book there with that early dismount on the books. Yeah, what I liked about that dismount from Adam was it wasn't because he needed to get off. He just knew it was faster. So love seeing these shortcuts come out as these mature kids are progressing through the course. Great work out of Adam paying attention to that and uh, yeah. using it for his run. Benjamin's time to the buzzer was 2 minutes 35 seconds. Set the bar high for our first runner. Adam dropping down, but still has 2.06 left on the clock. So much time. He knows the pace that he has to set in order to clinch a top four spot. He's looking to beat Benjamin's time and is currently on track to do so. Those hands look pretty pretty far off the top of the cannonball, but we have seen that from some of our other athletes. Oh, oh and just struggling with that transition from the cliff to the second cannonball. We saw some great moves out of Adam, but unfortunately just not enough to get him all the way through the full course. That's currently putting Adam in second place with Zavin Ribeiro, our next runner, stepping up to the plate. Going to take on the spinning log first. We've seen a lot of different approaches. How fast is he going to go? Pretty fast, and it works for him. Very smart moves. It paid off. Now, with, I believe, four more athletes, we're going to start to see who's solidifying their spots in the top four. So if Zavin can get past... Oh, no. Well, we have to get him there, but if Zavin can get past the cliffhangers and cannonballs, he can definitely secure himself a spot in the finals. Now but we, we got to get past. As he Let's touched see. that first book, it looked like he wanted to go for that early dismount as we saw Benjamin and Adam go for it earlier. But then he kind of hesitated, and on that backswing, he peeled off the book. Looks like he might want to commit earlier, but doesn't get the hold on the book that time. That's going to do it for Zavin's run. A fast point to the fourth obstacle, but that might not be enough for the top four, depending on how these last three runners perform. And that is a bummer for Zavin, unfortunately. All right, Mason Flanagan Hawks. Love the shirt. I think we got a little sequins action going on there. And great footwork easily through the rolling log and the BOSUs. Quick work to the fourth obstacle already here. Less than 15 seconds passed on the clock. Here we see Mason. Got the longer arms using that wingspan, not really having to lock off or really kip too much. But it looks like he's trying to build up a good swing one-handed. Okay, Dismount. Mason, I see you. Great I move. see you. Way to trust that grip strength, absolutely. And here we see Mason. Again, quick work on their faster to this point, I believe, than 
Adam was, if not definitely in the top three. This run is going. Whoa! What, what is this young man doing? Finger placement on there really sent. I that almost worked in the sense that he could put one it's hand on the cliff and be fine. It's almost a cannonball grip, but on a cliffhanger. What are they doing down in Australia? My goodness, that is some that is some innovation that we have yet to see in the states. I want to try that now. Mason, you've inspired me. I'm going to have to make sure I specifically state they can't do that in rules walkthroughs from now on. <laughs> Mason, you're killing me here, kid. Now, Mason. But he's also killing the course right now. Taking a little bit of time on these fish hooks. I think it's the height. Everyone is getting in line with the hook. They're not raising it enough to pop them in and out, at least on their first attempt, as we can see there. Got one final move, really, great match. It really is a strong engagement of the shoulders, which is not something that you get your first couple of times doing obstacles like that. But it doesn't matter for Mason, a full clear, zero retries. Great work out of this young man. Look at that one-handed swing on the book. Insane. Making my and job harder as a judge here with his beta break on the, uh, the cliff ledges here. And then again, wasn't perfect through the fish hooks, but managed to get there still with plenty of time on the clock. A time of two minutes flat is going to put him in first place for the time being. That does secure his spot into the Premier Series Finals as Jordy Sinclair, Sinclair is now struggling to lock his in. Jordy is going to have to beat the fourth off. Get out of there. Spot. What a save. Ooh. Tilted the platform there as well. And you know what? We're seeing some high grabs on this rope swing. I think these athletes are expecting it to be a little further than it actually is. Yeah, another thing too that I'm seeing a lot of the athletes do is they're hanging on to the rope. So when you do a rope swing to a platform, as soon as your feet are there, you want to let go of that rope because what it's going to do is it's going to pull you back off the platform, which we've seen quite a few athletes struggle with. So don't be afraid to let go of the rope and give yourself a mini lache to that platform. Oh, oh and it looked like Jordy was going for a quick move off the books, which is smart. He's seen a lot of his fellow competitors do that. But he now absolutely has to clear this obstacle if he wants to progress further in the course. Absolutely. Currently on the bubble is Zaven Ribeiro. And because of his slip up on the first obstacle, Jordy was not faster than Zaven. He has to beat this obstacle if he wants top four right now. Oh, and he's not looking super certain. Oh, but his foot tapped. And the wait, are they they're letting it go? I guess. I mean, his body did cross the plane, so he did clear the obstacle before engaging with any of the platforms behind him. He is safe, and this does mean that Jordy is in prime position right now to go to the finals. However, and beating this obstacle locks him in. Another split cliffhanger technique. Now, those are pretty thin uh, boards for the cliffs. I think when you see a T-ledge in the U.S., it's typically a much thicker thing. So I, I wonder if you'd be able to split it like that. But no, we all right, saw we're it. stuck here on the cannonball. We saw Jordy abandon that split grip on that last cliff, went for one side, didn't like how it felt. And so he uh, immediately tried to go back. But still a great fight. Ended up using both of his retries, but it was enough to land him in fourth place. But that might not be enough with Nico Zandana coming up on the course. Second place in the first youth championship of the Ninja Challenge League last year. Nico wow. is flying. Cruising. The first, you, you barely knew there was a separation in the first three obstacles. He strung them all together, made it all look like one. Very quick obstacle transitions. Easy work on that dismount. I think we're looking at one of the fastest times. A little rushing here, you know, as he just misgrabbed the bar on the rolling wheel. But settling back into his pace, definitely the fastest to this point we've seen so far. Beating this obstacle is going to put him in the top three. Guarantee a spot in the finals. 
And there it is, Nico Zandona taking the top four. But now, with only 50 seconds having passed, Nico could absolutely get the fastest time. He's just got to be efficient on the fish hooks. Yeah, and, and struggling just as the other athletes did with the release and placement, although that was a super smooth transition. Final move here. Now. Yeah, He's definitely he hanging. hanging. And there we have it, our fastest time to this point. One minute, four, one minute, 13 seconds. The fastest we've seen all day, beating second place by 47 whole seconds, and we can see why with that speed. That was intense speed. I also just love that he watched every athlete before him, took some of their beta. Now, on the cliffs and, and cannonballs, he did use that split grip, but he didn't really need it. You saw on the other one, he just grabbed the T-Ledge. Super strong athlete. Definitely a athlete that we are going to want to watch. That efficiency is going to do very well for him in the finals at Ferox this season. Absolutely. Great runs out of our top four. Adam Francis really breaking through there with the uh, split grip on that cliff ledge, something that I wish I could say I've seen before, but for the first time in a long time, that's a first for me. I've never seen anybody grab a, a floating cliff like that. And it was, you know, a, uh, yeah, it was, it was a very great beta that allowed him to uh, progress through the course very smoothly. And Adam will be clinching our fourth spot in the finals. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Adam brings that to uh, to the U.S. when he comes over for finals. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today for the World Ninja League Premier Series in Ninja Academy in Perth, Australia. This has been Mary Layton, the commentator Ninja and Ken Casillas. We have just wrapped up our Mature Kids division, and we will be back shortly for our preteen division to see who will be claiming those spots to join us for the Premier Series Finals at Ferox Athletics in November. Thanks so much. Be back soon. Thank you, guys.